If I've learned one thing from my now over 1,000 hours coaching, it's that 90% of people aren't stuck because they need new stuff, but instead because they need to stop their bad habits. So today, I wanna go over the top 25 mistakes every low rank makes. But my promise to you is that even if you could just pick out the one or two worst mistakes you make from this video and cut those out, you'll rank up faster and easier than you would from any other method or any other video out there. If you don't know me, my name's Luke. I'm a top 0.1% rated player, but I'm mainly known for running Rocket League's number one live coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap. Inside, we specialize in taking gold through champ rank players up to Grand Champ in just six weeks or less. At the time I'm recording this, we already have 45 of 100 seats taken for our upcoming March launch. I imagine these will sell out in the next 10 to 14 days. So if you want to get involved before those last 50 go, and we shut things down until May, DM me with the keyword go, and I'll get back to you so we can talk details as soon as possible. My discord will be first linked down below, and let's talk about the worst low rank mistakes. Okay, mistake number 25, we're gonna start with the obvious, not warming up. I promise these are gonna get more technical as we go on, but if you're watching a Rocket League tutorial video and you're not warming up, I mean, come on. There's not much more I could tell you, so let's start here. Number 24, learning the advanced stuff before the basics. This one mainly goes out to everybody in my Twitch chat commenting, I can air dribble, ceiling shot, and flip reset, but I'm stuck in plat. Why? It's probably not because any of those mechanics, it's because you can't pull off a consistent kickoff or you can't consistently wave dash and half flip when you need to hit those things first, then worry about the air dribbles and the flip resets. The truth is the basics come up too much in game for you not to know them. So if you could just put a little bit of time into learning that stuff first, by the time you actually do learn air dribbles and stuff like that, it will be impossible for you to still be stuck in plat. Number 23 not cheating on the kickoff. By cheat, all I mean is kind of creep up slowly behind the 50-50 and play close rather than go get boost. The reason it's better to cheat up is because sure, sometimes your teammate will lose the kickoff, but most often the ball is gonna end in the midfield. I would always rather start every play with the ball from having cheated up than start every play on defense, even if I have 100 boost. So cheat up. Number 22, leaving the kickoff as first man. Basically, the situation here is a lot of time on kickoff, the ball will 50-50 out to the side and your teammate will be the one to scoop it up. What most people do in this situation is just instantly rotate back to corner boost and let their teammate have a 1v1. However, the thing you have to understand in these situations is that if one person completely gets control of the ball after kickoff, there's usually gonna be a play on that really quick. So instead of getting boost, I always recommend you collect pads and follow the play especially in 2v2, if there's going to be a shot on net after the 50-50. Just from doing this, I've been able to convert so many goals. So try this at your rank, and I promise you'll pick up free goals every game. Mistake number 21, front post defending. Most people know by now that the back post, or in other words, the post opposite the side of the ball, is easier to defend from. As a defender, you can cover in front of your net, you have access to the backboard, and it's generally just much easier to stop an attack. Yet, even through the higher ranks, the mistake I catch is even some people who rotate to the back post initially get anxious if the ball's not coming and slowly creep up through the net so that eventually they're just sitting on their front post. If you get to the back post early, if you can do a loop around, grab some boost and get back to back post, but it's better to be sitting back post still than up at your front post with a ton of momentum flying under the ball into your corner. Mistake number 20, not joining my Discord server. All right, no, we're not, we're not gonna actually count that. But if you haven't joined yet, you totally should. I actually run the largest Rocket League Improvement Discord and it's completely free to join. There are tons of teammates in there, training resources and coaches who will help you. Plus you can leave whenever you want. So it kind of is a mistake not to join, but you know, we'll, we'll move on. Number 20, autopiloting in free play. 
Of course, if your goal is just to warm up, yeah, jump in free play, hit the ball around as fast as you can. But if your goal is to actually train something and improve, it's probably not what 90% of people watching should do. Yes, if you watch the pros train on stream, they're basically just going to be hitting the ball around in free play, but that's because they already know how to do every mechanic. If you're watching right now and your goal is to improve, odds are you don't know every mechanic. So just jumping in free play and shutting your brain off is not going to be the best way to improve. Instead, pick a specific mechanic like flicks or wall play, something that you ideally don't know, and focus on that for just five or 10 minutes. But just picking something in specific and actually having a goal in mind will help you get so much more out of your time than just mindlessly free playing. Mistake number 19, positioning like the pros. The worst example of this that I see come up all the time is something I like to call side positioning. At the high levels, pros will often position to the side because they can actually communicate and pass and make a lot of team plays. Yet odds are when you play, you will be solo queuing without voice comms and playing with people who, to be honest, can't be trusted at all to pull off consistent team plays. So if you try to position to the side of your teammates like pros do, one, you'll probably never get the pass, and two, even if you do, it probably won't be a good one. So in general, it's almost always better to just be back behind your teammates. That way you'll be there to cover when they mess up and you'll be able to save your team from loads of free goals. Number 18, moving too close on offense. One of the most common situations you'll find yourself in in Rocket League is being on the attacking half waiting for your teammate to pass the ball. I see too many players get anxious and just continue to drive forward while waiting for the center only for the ball to go over their head. So remember, it's always easier to get a ball in front of you. And most of the time, there's no additional benefit to being closer to that center. It's just gonna reduce your reaction time and put yourself in an awkward position if a pass does come. Number 17, throwing possession. The way I like to explain this is that as you rank up, the importance of having ball control goes up. Yet I see so many diamond and champ players get the ball on their half or at midfield when nobody's there and just send the ball into their opponent's corner. This is a bad habit that I think tons of people develop while they're plat and diamond, but if you want to get through champ, you have to kick it. Learn how to control the ball through either bounce dribbling with soft touches or through carries and flicks. If you don't know how to do this, this, I'll have some videos linked on screen where I explain it more. But if you want to get to GC, absolutely stop tossing possession. Number 16. This one builds on the last tip perfectly, and it's taking shots from midfield. The situation here is let's say you get the ball at midfield and your opponents aren't pressuring you and are still on their back or front posts. The mistake that a lot of people make here is going for the shot just because they have it. And if you're shooting the ball from far away all the time, most good defenders are not gonna have too much trouble saving it. Instead, you have gotta get comfortable moving the ball closer to the net and taking your shot as close as possible every time. Of course, you've got to be able to gauge how much time you have and you need the ball control to be able to move the ball closer to the net without getting too heavy of a touch and just pushing it away. But if you can learn how to control the ball up the field and shoot from closer, you're going to be able to score on them 90% of the time you get the ball. Number 15, leaving your team alone. I see so many players completely leaving the play, driving all the way back to their side of the field to pick up their own corner boost and then return. I think it's because we're more scared of getting scored on than we are at missing a chance to get a goal. But the thing you've got to understand is if you're back on your side of the field, grabbing corner boost while your teammate is centering the ball and you miss an open net, that's just as costly as you conceding a goal because you could have scored one. So unless the play is about to end and you're not needed, never leave your team in a 2v3 or 1v2 just to go grab boost. This basically gives up all pressure on offense, so stick with your team. Number 14, grabbing boost with ball cam off. 
I see so many players completely shut off ball cam when they want to grab a big boost or pick up pads. The problem here is if the ball redirects or there's a collision or anything happens, you won't know about it until you turn ball cam back on, which in many cases is too late. Instead, if you've got to go get big boost, line yourself up with it, make sure your car is centered, and then simply turn ball cam back on while holding down drive and not turning. I promise the boost won't move. You can just wait until you see your meter go up. This way you'll be ready if anything happens last second and you'll actually know which way to turn once you grab the big boost. Number 13 flipping without a destination or during a collision. What I found from watching pro gameplay is that some of the best of the best rarely flip while rotating, if at all. But the main reason you don't want to flip is because while you flip, your car is stuck in that animation. If, for example, you're flipping across the field and a 50-50 happens and the ball goes the opposite way, you're going to be stuck traveling there until the flip finishes and you land back on the ground. Instead, it's almost always better to wait if there's about to be a 50-50 or some sort of direction change with the ball before you flip. Of course, situations vary, but if you save your flips for only when you're going long distance around the field, you're actually going to be much quicker to the play. And it might sound counterintuitive, but you'll play faster. Number 12, going for every center. The reason being is because in many cases, it's going to be easier for a defender to get to a center than it will for you on offense. You got to remember, the only goal of a defender is to get a touch on the ball when you, as the attacker, basically have to shoot it on net. This is not to mention that the entire field is behind you when you're attacking, and if you don't put it on net, it could bounce off the backboard and go flying back at you. So really be cautious with how many centers centers you go for. And just because your teammate is spamming, take the shot. Don't feel like you have to go for every center. Mistake number 11, not closing the gap. If you're ever, say, defending back post and you notice your opponent has the ball on their side of the field or midfield, and there's a lot of space between you. The reason it's bad is because this allows your opponent to set up an attack and get away with messing up a dribble or fumbling the ball while they drive it towards your net. Instead, if you ever do have space and you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you want to close the gap between you and your opponent and start shadowing their movements back towards your side of the field. This will, one, allow you to capitalize if they do mess up, but two, it'll allow you to save the ball with their momentum, which gives you more reaction time than if you were just going to try to guess and intercept the ball from your net. Number 10, quick chatting anything negative. Nobody likes the guy spamming the wow quick chat or the take the shot quick chat. And if that's you, your teammates will play worse because of you. So if you're that guy, drop the quick chats. Number nine, double jumping instead of jumping and flipping. I think this is a mistake that people make because they don't realize how high you can actually get without having to double jump. But the idea here is that if you ever do have the option to make a clear or take a shot, single jump and flip into it. That second flip is going to allow you to adjust and course correct midair. Plus, you'll get way more power. If you didn't know, jumping and holding actually extends the timer you have for your second flip. And you can get a full goal height above the ground just with a single jump and boosting. So don't underestimate just single jumping and flipping into the ball. Don't feel like you have to fast aerial or double jump aerial to everything. You're just going to drive the ball into the ground too much. Number eight, flying anywhere you can drive. Just because the ball is in the air doesn't mean you have to be. Yet, for whatever reason, I see so many players taking off way too early for balls that are halfway across the map. The thing you've got to understand is that when you take off, you can't just instantly return to the ground and turn around if something goes wrong. So anytime there's a jump ball in the air, if you can drive and then jump versus jumping immediately, always opt to jump and take off at the last second. This is going to be more boost efficient, will allow you to turn back if you need to, and you'll get there faster because you'll be able to drive and boost on the ground rather than just boosting and not gaining any acceleration in the air. Number seven, straight line rotations. Let's say you're in your opponent's corner, you're trying to get a center, and for whatever reason, the play fizzles out. The mistake a lot of of lower ranked players make is exiting the play from the exact same line that they entered. The reason moving up and down the field in straight lines is bad is because it will often cause you to collide and intersect paths with your teammates. Even if you don't hit them, this overlapping of your coverage is going to hurt how your team moves and just reduce your efficiency. So when you can, 
always opt to move through the play and continue in the same circular direction that you started in when you do decide your time is done on the ball. This is going to make your rotations much more efficient and allow you to cover and be ready for any ball that comes across the field. Mistake number six, not looking for demos when you rotate. When you get finished making your play on the ball, it's normal to just want to rotate back to your corner and grab big boost. But the thing you have to understand is that one of the best opportunities to get demos is while you're transitioning from being on the ball to being the last man back on your team. So many players will just shut off after they finish their play and want to flip back to their side of the field. But if you're flipping through the midfield all the time and just rotating for boost, you're going to miss tons of opportunities to disrupt the play. So anytime you finish your play on the ball, the first thing you should look for is, are there opportunities for demos? Then if not, continue rotating through and get boost. I promise if you just start doing this in your games alone, you can have a crazy amount of impact and create so many goals that wouldn't have been there otherwise. Mistake number five, rushing your corners. A lot of players look at the Rocket League map something like this, thinking any ball on their side of the field is dangerous, and as you move downfield, it's always better. However, the Rocket League map actually looks much more like this, where yes, the area in front of your net is risky, but your corners are actually one of the safest places to have the ball. The reason for this is because when the ball's in the corner, there are much less angles to actually shoot on your net. And as long as you're positioning properly, it's quite easy to shut down a shot from the corner. Let the ball roll to your corner. Let the opponents approach you because if you take a 50-50 in your corner, almost any 50-50 outcome is going to be good for you because 90% of the field is behind your opponent. And if you can get any beat, you'll have a free breakaway. Mistake number four, jumping for everything. This mainly occurs at the midfield, especially after kickoffs. The thing you've got to understand is that when there's a jump ball at the midfield, if you jump up and fly for it, where are you going to be after you connect with the ball? Most likely soaring through the sky towards the opponent's net out of the play for at least a minute. This is why I say generally, if the ball is up in the air at the midfield and you don't have a clear shot on net or you can't clearly beat an opponent who's already flying to it, just let them hit it. Most times when the ball is high in the air, you can't get a good touch on it anyways. And just staying grounded and letting the opponent toss the ball to you is going to be way better. Bottom line, avoid jumping for balls at the midfield unless there's obviously a benefit to doing so. Number three, not challenging as first man. If you do notice a teammate is behind you and the opponents are attacking, it is super important that you don't wait back as first man. Even if you don't have a good challenge on the ball, often your job when you have a teammate behind you is just to force the opponent to make a decision. It's much better for your team to have two chances at defending the ball than for you to wait back and then you both have to try to save it at the goal line. So if somebody's attacking you and they're dribbling, generally I like to challenge flicks high. And if somebody's coming off the wall and making an aerial attack at you, I like to challenge low. That way I force the opponent to my backboard and my teammate can have an easier save there. Of course, every situation varies, but bare minimum, make sure you're challenging or at least forcing the opponent to do something as first man. You do not want to be the person holding up your teammate and trying to make saves on the goal line. Mistake number two, ignoring defensive mechanics. I get it. You want to practice air dribbles and redirects and flip resets. We all do. But the thing that's probably holding back your rank is your defense. At least below Grand Champ, almost every player has way better offense than they do defense. So this is purely an observation, but I recommend if you have made it to this point, think to yourself, when was the last time you practiced anything defensive? Whether it was backward saves, backboard clears, wall play even. Most people haven't even touched this stuff compared to the flashy mechanics. But if you do even put a little bit of time into this stuff, you're going to be able to improve so much faster than everybody else at your rank who's skipping it. And mistake number one, the worst mistake of all, solo queuing. Yes, I solo queue too sometimes, but especially at the lower ranks, solo queuing is one of the biggest mistakes you can make. The truth is half of the goals that are coming at plat and diamond and champ are off of double commits. And if you can just get on voice comms with somebody, you can eliminate almost all of that. Now, as you get higher and higher in the ranks, it's harder to find teammates, which is partially why you should join my discord. But from what I've seen, people who find a teammate can go up anywhere from 50 to 100 
100 MMR just from that alone. So if after watching this, you want the fastest way to rank up, just start queuing with teammates, period. And there's almost no way you won't see an improvement. Okay, that was a lot and my time's up. So if you want more, join the Discord for more free stuff and to be first notified when new videos drop. And if you do want more personal help from me, feel free to DM me on Discord. I'll have that first link down below. Otherwise, check out this follow video linked here. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace, guys.